Alright, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. How you doing? Good, I hope. Welcome back to another Chelsea News video where more stories are surfacing around world football's media. Interesting ones, disappointing ones, and for me, rather indifferent ones. Today, we're going to be talking about three main stories, and that is Pedro on his way out, which is a bit of admin, really, get that out of the way. Edison Cavani, the soon-to-be 33-year-old ex-superstar striker apparently being heavily linked with Chelsea or Chelsea and Manchester United are sniffing around him frustrating and disappointing and finally Wilfred Zaha really pushing hard for a January move changing his agent to a friend of Abramovich and Marina Granovskaya going in hard to lower the price. So a lot to talk about there, but before we get into the content today, please do remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Click the bell notifications icon and why not like the video to help Yan out. All right, let's get into the content. Like I said, a bit of admin first, Pedro Rodriguez, long Chelsea servant, was well, a long a few years now, five years, I guess. Just a decent amount of time. Pedro's been really good for Chelsea. He's kind of gone under the radar a little bit. He never stopped running. He, we bought him at the end of his sort of prime, but you know, he was amazing for Barcelona. Uh, United, in, incidentally, as well, who were in for Cavani, were heavily in for Pedro, but he ended up coming to Chelsea. He had like a goal contribution in one in every three games over across, across all competitions, and he scored some big goals. So, he won't be the biggest personality in the history books, but he's certainly been a very good player for Chelsea. Now, after his substitution in the Forest game when his head was a bit low and he looked a bit sad, I think a lot of people accepted that's probably the last time we will see Pedro in a Chelsea shirt. Now, the Spaniard's been linked with a lot of English clubs, including Aston Villa, to link up with former teammate John Terry. But he has also now been linked to West Ham, who are looking to add a little bit more attacking flair in rotation. Sure, they have Yarmolenko and Felipe Anderson but really maybe Moisey Jesus David Moyes Moisey might be looking to bring Pedro in I mean it'll be an interesting one it's certainly probably pay him well he gets to stay in London it might suit Pedro fine but I think he'll have a few suitors around the sort of middle lower echelons of the Premier League West Ham will probably be a good move for him actually Probably not going for the glory, but it'll be good money and he gets to keep his locale. Still watch this space, I'll keep you guys posted on where Pedro moves and when. So swing by this channel daily. Right, before we talk about Wilfred Zaha switching agents in a strategic attempt to get to Chelsea, allegedly, let's talk about Edison Cavani. The Uruguayan striker with beautiful long flowing hair. Right, I used to absolutely love Cavani. I still think he's a superb striker, but over the last sort of five years, he's been so, so good for club and country. Um, you know, playing in Italy, going to PSG. He's got some of the best movement you'll see a striker ever have. The way he ghosts in, floats about and meets balls. He's literally so, so good with his mobility. Obviously, he's very big and strong and, and an elite level finisher. Cavani's going to be 33 in a few weeks. <laughs> Probably less than that, it's next month, so it could be a matter of days. That is not what Chelsea want. I could see Manchester United going in for him as a second option. You know, a sort of an almost Ebro replacement uh, when they're throwing balls in the box, when they can't counter-attack anymore. But for me, really, how different now is Cavani to Olivier Giroud? It would kind of be like replacing a 33-year-old with a 33-year-old. He won't have the same ability. I'm not sure if his contract's run out. I have a feeling it is, so he'll probably be on a free, although there'll be really, really, really high wages and signing on fee and agent fees and all that kind of stuff, I think. But still, it kind of goes against what Frank Lampard's doing. Even if you're of the inclination where you think Edison Cavani's still a good player, he can still score goals, he's still very physically dominating and could deal with the Premier League. I'd say all the same things about Olivier Giroud, who's been doing well in the Premier League for like years and years and years. And he does not look like he suits Frank Lampard's system at all. So why would that make me think Edison Cavani's going to come in and suddenly suit the system? And again, acclimatised to a new country and league and team mid-season. For me, hopefully, this isn't a nonsense, nothing story and it would just bypass because honestly, I'd probably see him suiting Manchester United more than Chelsea, but he does not suit this Chelsea side. And again, no disrespect to Cavani, I think he's an elite level, sort of huge name in world football history now. You know, he's scored so many goals and he's scored loads for his country. He's been good for Suarez up front for Uruguay. He's been good in Italy. He's an excellent striker. No thank you, not at Chelsea. I mean, does he really make Chelsea better? That kind of leads me on to what both Jody Morris 
and Frank Lampard have both said separately and together in isolation and whatever at different times they both said look we're only going to bring players in that make Chelsea better. They're not going to bring players in just to fill the numbers. It's going to be legitimate upgrades. Not wasting money, I guess. I mean, you could argue if Cavani's free, it wouldn't be wasting money, really. Or he could be an upgrade on a no-striker hole, but he'd want to play it. Anyway, I'm digressing and going back to Cavani. What I really want to talk about here is Wilfred Zaha. Now, sure, Chelsea are heavily interested in Jadon Sancho and have made inquiries about him, and he would certainly be a preference over Wilfred Zaha. If you're going on the theory or the concept of Lampard and Morris's only getting a player that's obviously upgrading, on the surface of it, you could look at Pedro out, Zaha in, being an obvious massive upgrade at the moment, just because of where they are in their career and their form, I guess. But Zaha wouldn't be coming in to be a fourth winger rotational replacement, unless maybe he is, and he just backs himself to be so good at Chelsea that he'll play himself into the team, score loads of goals, get loads of assists, and just be a starting winger at Chelsea. Maybe. But here's some information. According to Sky Sports, mm -hmm. Chelsea target Wilfred Zaha has now changed his agent to Pini Zahavi, excuse my pronunciation, which indicates his willingness to move on from Crystal Palace. Shock. Zahavi is one of the most well-known football agents, whoops, I mean, I don't know who he is, are currently working and is good friends with Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich. Here it is, people. The move could push Zaha even closer to Chelsea. Frank Lampard's men are tracking, are thought to be tracking the winger. Also, there is more news going around the collective world football rags about how Marina Granovskaya is actually in talks with said agent and Crystal Palace and looking to negotiate a lesser transfer fee than the one quoted. The quote they've put on the table for Wilfred Zaha, who is obviously gagging to get out of there, still trying on the pitch, but I think it's well known for a while now he wants his exit, is 80 million pounds. Now, a January fee for Jadon Sancho looked to be north of 140 million, which you'd imagine could drop down 20 million at least in the summer, potentially. But Wilfred Zaha is a player that splits opinion massively. I flip-flopped a little bit on him, I was massively against him, but then I was, you know, on board with it. I think he could be the, the difference maker to secure top four. I think it'd work in Frank Lampard's Chelsea team in terms of winning penalties, dribbling, playing between the lines, and putting in some offensive output as well. If Chelsea do manage to negotiate his price down with some sort of deal with Crystal Palace, I think Chelsea fans generally have to be open-minded to the concept of him joining and hopefully doing well. Remember, there has to be some sort of trust in Frank Lampard here and his project, and Chelsea will only go in for him hard if they have Frank Lampard's blessing, especially with that level of investment. Remember, Wilfred Zaha was quoted as a £100 million player last summer and it's already dropped down £20 million. He is a very talented player. People need to remember as well that he's playing for Crystal Palace under Roy Hodgson. We've seen him do magnificent things with the ball at his feet and some magnificent goals when given the chance. Put him in a Chelsea team that's creating loads of chances, gives him the ability to express himself more and more, and is actually playing with players that know how to correspond with his one-twos and, you know, little flicks and tricks. Really? Really, he could, I won't say explode, but he could become a really effective player in the Premier League. Now, you can believe all that that I've just said and still be of the opinion, well, it's still too much money. Chelsea could go and spend 30, 40 million from a player in Europe and he might be the same and even a year or two younger. I get that, but it still comes with risk. Going back to West Ham, look at players they've signed up front, Sebastian Allaire. Sure, he was good uh, for Frankfurt, but he scored one goal for them and he cost him 40 million pounds. Trust me, you can buy players from Europe and the risk will not pay off. So maybe, what, you get Zaha for 75 million after negotiations, knowing that he can do it in the Premier League, slot straight in and help your chances. Remember, Chelsea have got money to burn as well. That's obviously a terrible thing to say, never waste money, but it's not like they've saved all this time for this one player. They, they buy Wilfred Zaha, your squad gets better. There's no risk. And that's what I was kind of leading back to with Frank Lampard and Jody Morris saying, look, we're only gonna buy someone that obviously makes us better. Zaha obviously makes Chelsea better and it secures their fight for a top four, securing Champions League football, you know, a cup run, whatever, Champions League, he could be good in the Champions League. I have a sneaking suspicion that Zaha, he's been waiting for that moment to hear that music, 
that I think he might rise to the occasion in the Champions League. I can see him doing a mazy dribbly run, scoring a crucial goal. I think it's just in him, personally. But I get it. I get the fans that are calling for Hakim Ziyech and all these other European wingers to come in. And people, Chelsea fans, that just want Chelsea to hold out for Jadon Sancho, which they might well still do. Who knows, Jadon Sancho might come in and replace Willian and Zaha comes in to replace Pedro. I mean, think about that. That's two massive upgrades just there. And suddenly you've got four top tier elite level wingers fighting for two places and rotating in Hudson Adore, Christian Pulisic, Wilfred Zaha and Jadon Sancho. Thank you very much. Who says a team with Chelsea's ambitions can't have four top tier elite wingers? Huh? Anyway, what do you think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on Zaha. Pedro and Cavani. <laughs> Remember you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to my second channel, link in the top of the description. I uploaded yesterday, so have fun with that FIFA video. You lot enjoy the football. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby